I'm on with George Hill, senior student down at Alabama, University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. I think there's a pretty big game down there in Tuscaloosa this weekend, isn't there, George? I think so. It's uh, it's already getting packed down here. It started getting packed around Tuesday. I mean, I was walking from class. It took me longer time and drove from my fraternity house to my house. It took me 30 minutes, so it's uh, pretty wild. Georgia, it's, uh, game day is going to be down there from uh, ESPN, and uh, but there's a lot of talk already that uh, Jalen's back. Jalen's back, and uh, but they were talking about Jalen Hurts. But uh, Jalen Jalen Milrow's a good game last week, but is that a little premature? I wouldn't say it's premature. I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff he can improve on. Um, one thing I took away from his performance was his ability to stay in the pocket. Um, I really thought he did a good job of that, and when he needed to tuck it and run, he did, and. Uh, he performed very well. I hope to see the same uh, tomorrow afternoon. Is this one of the biggest games that they've had in Tuscaloosa in the last couple of years? I think so. I mean, since I've been coming to school down here, last game, big game I remember going to was the LSU team when Burrow and Justin Jefferson and all of them were on the team. So I think this game might have, has a little bit more hype to it around uh, just around everything. And so, yeah, absolutely. It's a huge game. We'll swing back to your prediction on the game here in a few minutes, but uh, you uh, mentioned uh, uh, Joe Burrow and all those guys, and that's how we kind of found you. You know, you had some uh, posts out there on Instagram this weekend, and that was uh, two of the big games you kind of predicted, and you hit spot on. One was uh, uh, LSU, Florida State. What did you see that a lot of people saw out there? Because you kind of you were high on Florida State and not so high on LSU. Yeah, so, I mean, I thought LSU was overhyped to begin with. Um, I mean, if you look at their last season, they got by with a few games that, you know, they probably shouldn't have won. And Alabama being one of them, they got lucky. But uh, Florida State looks really, really good. Um, they got some big dudes out there at wideout. And, I mean, they averaged 6'5", almost 195, 200 pounds. So, Florida State's going to be a contender in the long run. I really do believe that. Do you think that uh, some of that game, and I, I kind of felt that game came down to some coaching. Uh, Norvell made some adjustments in that second half, bringing the two backs into the backfield and really giving the running backs that extra blocker that really seemed to make the difference, whereas Kelly just kind of seemed almost befuddled in the second half, didn't even he know did. what adjustments it came. Did you kind of have the same feeling? I did have the same feeling. And I also think that Jordan Travis is just an exceptional quarterback. I mean, if you look at the way he played and – how LSU plays defense, Smash Mouth's defense. Jordan Travis really handled that well. And I think the coaching aspect on Florida State, you know, threw LSU for a hurting. So, what about uh, the other one you nailed? And you nailed it pretty big. Um, is, uh, and I know I, I talked to you a little bit early, dirty, and that's where we kind of set this up was uh, during the Duke uh, Clemson game. Wow. And you said you really felt – you told me to watch that game. You really felt like it was going to hit. And I texted you back and I said field goals weren't going to do it, but they did. And uh, yeah. what did you see there? I mean, because you were you were high on Duke the so, whole game. Um, what, I have a fraternity brother who's good friends with uh, Riley Leonard. And I remember watching him, knew him from Fairhope and stuff. And Duke was returning 18 starters from last year. And, I I mean, they put, they put the hurt on uh, Clemson and – Clemson looked all right, but, you know, Duke walked out of it and they played, you know, lights out. They played 100% spot on, no penalties. They played how a football game should be played, and ultimately they walked away with a, a ranked win. So that was really good for Duke, and uh, I was really high on Duke all week. I thought that Clemson was going to go in there and crap the bed, and that's exactly what they did. Interesting stat uh, that they, they came out from a, a, a... Dabu Sweeney's press conference, and I think people are going to be a little shocked that that's going to be more of a win of how good Duke is and not how poorly, even though Clemson had some turnovers. But uh, when they run, when Clemson runs for 200 and passes for more than 200 in a game, they're 108 and zero. Um, wow. so, so I think that's, I think people are going to be, and again, I think you, you, again, that's where I got kind of impressed with some of your insight earlier in the week was, uh, when you were so high on Duke. And I think that's going to be more of a game that, uh, people are going to start to see how good Duke is. And I think you might see Duke potentially vying for a spot in the ACC championship at the end of the game, at the end of the season. You feel the same? I agree. And I think as long as Riley Leonard keeps playing the way he is and shows that he's a top quarterback in the league, not only can he throw the ball. But he can run. He's got some legs on him. And I think they could, you know, make a push for the ACC championship for sure. 
So, uh, Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss, they traveled down to Tulane this weekend. Trap game? I would – I see it. My my take is I think it's going to be high scoring. Um, you know, if Ole Miss doesn't score the ball on offense, then, you know, Tulane's a very good ball club. They are. And it's down – it's like you said, down in Tulane. I mean, it could very easily be a trap game. But I'm going to take Ole Miss in that one um, by two touchdowns. Okay. Well, Auburn goes out to California, all the way across the country. You know, Cal has had their struggles, but and, and Hugh Freeze did look good, and you know, and I guess uh, and uh, Boji Wood, coach uh, and uh, contributor on Inside the Numbers and Crazy Eight College Pick'em, you know, did say you know when Auburn has played cupcakes in the past, uh, they haven't uh, treated them like cupcakes. But Hugh Freeze definitely ate the cupcake last week. So does uh, <laughs> Auburn go out west and uh, have uh, have their way with Cal? I think they, I think they will. I think they'll cover their spread. But the thing I'm most interested in looking at is their quarterback situation. If you saw last week, Peyton Thorne brought them all the way down to the red zone just for their backup, Robbie Ashford, to score three touchdowns. I mean, seems like to me there's a little bit of a situation in the quarterback room. But if they get that straightened out and find their right guy, I think they beat the brakes off Cal. Alabama secondary going to be okay tomorrow. I think so. Yes, sir. Um, Malachi Moore is looking healthy. He was practicing. Um, we'll know more tomorrow right before game time, but I think we'll be in a hundred percent full effect on defense tomorrow. Okay. So give us your uh, prediction and uh, just give us a little breakdown and then we'll wrap it up here for Alabama, um, Texas tomorrow. So I think, I think Bama covers the spread again. Um, I mean, like I said at the beginning, the atmosphere down here is absolutely electric. Um, I think that's the loudest we're going to hear the stadium in, you know, a couple years. And I think that's going to be a key factor. If Jalen plays the way he did last week, I say I think we'll win. And our wideouts, I mean, you saw how good they were last week. Isaiah Bond is catching the ball. He's fast. Our running backs are insane. Our secondary, too. I mean, if you saw how fast they closed on defenders out in the flats, I was just – there were seven guys within two seconds of the dude catching the ball. And, I mean, I think that's really big. Um, I also think Texas doesn't know what they're walking into down here. But, I mean, that's a little bias coming from a student down here. But um, I really do think it's going to be a great game. But I'm taking Alabama by two touchdowns. There you go. Student who picked Duke and Florida State. (laughs) <laughs> against the grain last week so uh don't sell yourself short so well no, george uh if things go according to your two touchdown win tomorrow i have a feeling we'll be talking to you again throughout the season as uh alabama will be hosting some uh big games and if, if your old miss predictions holds true they'll have a big game there in two more weeks and so we'll look forward to talking to you again uh, i'll go ahead and give it to you uh, roll tide roll tide thank you so much thanks george have a good time tomorrow yes sir